Good morning. I know we are missing a few folks today, but I'll give everybody a few more minutes to come on in. In all honesty, I'm kind of waiting around to see if the uh, app delivery folks are here yet, because they're usually the ones that kick us off. So, we've got a few other things on the agenda today as well, not the least of which being like, hello, Dave! Dave, you're here! Hooray! I am. Hello. Excellent. I'll, I'll make you do like a more formal introduction and things um, as we get in towards all of this. No, excellent. I didn't expect you on camera as well today. Excellent. The weather here is terrible, so I'm not taking my kid to football. Instead, she's sitting next to me playing on the iPad. It's okay. You know, well, we, we welcome everyone to these meetings, clearly. <laughs> yeah, I'll hold for another minute because I don't think we're going to use all the time this morning, but we'll see. And uh, uh, Liz um, is not joining us, so you get me this morning. All right, that looks like everyone that we are likely to get. Uh, we're now four minutes past the uh, top of the hour, so I'll go ahead and get us started. Um, our normal antitrust policy notice. Hello, welcome. Meeting logistics, you are here. Um, please note that this slide actually needs to be updated. We now have passcodes on the meetings, but it's in the public doc um, and it's in the CNCF calendar as well. So that's probably the best place to be able to grab the Zoom link. So. TOC members present today. I'll update this over on the um, TOC public working doc so you can see who's here and all of that. Our agenda is pretty straightforward today. Um, again, welcome to new TOC member. We'll kind of go over the projects needing review and we'll drop into SIG updates and hopefully there'll be time for questions as far as things coming around in the world, but we'll see. Um, so with that, actually, I'm going to do like Dave, this is now your time to be able to do like welcome new TOC member. Hello, come introduce yourself. Delighted to be able to have you. Uh, sure, I guess I'll try to keep it quick, but I'm Dave. I'm an engineer in the platform team at Spotify. I'm in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, I don't know, what What else do you want to know about me? No, that's good, that's great. Um, uh, you're, you're, you're here, you're welcome. Great to have you. Cool, thank you. Yeah, lovely. Um, next up, uh, kind of, we've got a few open votes out here. That's kind of the only thing that's really on my uh, needs TOC review. Uh, anyone is fully welcome to be able to put their hand up. I am watching chat as well, but we have an open vote on Rook and an open vote on the uh, open policy agent. And um, if I remember right, I don't think any of the TOC has actually voted on the open policy agent. So this is my shameless plug for, please get in there. Thank you. I think I was confused by whether it was a vote or a uh, period, comment period at the time. Comment period is done. We are now in okay, voting. Right. Go and go and right. do the do. Okay. Okay. No, that that actually is a good clarification. I don't know that it's entirely clear when we say public comment is not actually the vote yet. Public comment is come by and say things. So um, I will be more clear about being able to indicate which is the vote and which is public comment. 
So excellent. Um, any other things that I should have put on this particular slide? I'm checking chat and checking if anybody unmutes to be able to. Okay, no further confusion. Excellent. Uh, I'll turn it over to app delivery if any of those folks are here. I think I've got Harry on Hello? the line. Hello, excellent, go ahead. Yeah, 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 I'm here. So yeah, let me give a quick update on the uh, CGAP delivery. So uh, we recently have no uh, project under, under review, uh, but we do have some other working items. The so first one is the uh, working groups. We have some uh, uh, recent update. The first update is from air gapped working group, uh, which is about uh, cloud native application delivery in air gapped environment. So we are now uh, inviting uh, the telecom customers on uh, WayWorks to share real world user cases. Um, this is actually now um, also uh, with the help from uh, uh, Canolia from the WayWorks. So thank you very much for her help. So if any other company or any other members want to uh, contribute user cases regarding to the application delivery uh, in air gap environment, please feel free to contact to uh, the chairs or attend, attend the uh, SIG meeting. We are very happy to include your user cases in the upcoming, uh, uh, I will say it's a, a series of blog posts about uh, air gapped application delivery. So this is the first update. The second update is we also have a discussion to uh, about a emerging trade, which is about, uh, we, we, are, we, are, we are seeing that a lot of uh, platform builders uh, now, uh, they are very active in the community. They are building clone native application platforms based on Kubernetes, based on a clone native stack. But all of them, they're doing their own work and their are lack of um, interoperability. So how can we help them? And how can we onboard them in the SIG app delivery um, to talk to, to, to share uh, more details about what they are trying to build uh, what the community can help is the next step we are thinking about. So we are, we are trying to onboard <laughs> these uh, cloud native application platform builders uh, to see and save which, which are now, they are, they are quite far from the cloud native community. Although, although what they are doing is very closely related to uh, CNCF, but they're still far, 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 far away from uh, the community actually. So we're trying to onboard them. So if anyone have any suggestion on how to onboard the platform builders, for example, for example, somebody who are building a platform service, uh, who are building a um, in-house uh, service platform based on cloud native, cloud native stack, we're very happy to involve them in the SIG, in the community, and to improve the interoperability, to improve the standardization, and uh, this is the goal. And we also have a proposal in the community to move certain working group back to the SIG discussion because we notice there are, you know, the discuss some some discussion items are split into working groups. Uh, this is a, actually not very easy to. Yeah. So uh, Josh is asking about how what do we do we mean by onboarding? Uh, by onboarding, I'm saying that yes. We are trying to reach out to them. That is what we are trying to do. And also we, we try to involve them more in the uh, CNCF in the cloud native community, which, which, which recently now is not the case. For example, there are a lot of companies that are building platform service, right? But we don't know how they do that. And we don't know um, what technology they are using to build that because right now, most people in the cloud native community, they are very focused on the infrastructure layer. The focus on networking, storage, runtime of Kubernetes, but nobody care about those people who are building platform at top of them. So this is what I, I, I'm saying about onboarding them. And we are, trying to, we are trying to reach out to them. We are trying to involve them more and to, sh to share their cases, to share their blockers, if any, to share their ideas with the community. So this is what I, I'm, trying to, uh, I'm trying to express here. Yeah, uh, let me go back to slides. And uh, so uh, according to the proposal I just mentioned, uh, in the future, I think I think CGAP delivery may merge some of the working groups, for example, operator working group, 
uh, back into the SIG. So we will continue the uh, discussion around uh, operators uh, in the SIG meeting uh, instead of split the discussion to a different meeting. That, 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 that may be the direction we want to go. It's not determined yet, but uh, it, it, it's, it's, uh, I will say it's uh, promising. And there are also a bunch of working items that I want to give a quick update. The first is that uh, this is actually a proposal by Alloys. So the community uh, are trying to propose a sample application, uh, which, are, which, could, which, which could be used for uh, any kind of application delivery or management demo. And uh, this demo is very different from uh, what we are using today, like WordPress or Book Info. So this demo will include more uh, real world use showcases. For example, it will include the credential management, the data input and output, um, to showcase how we uh, use Kubernetes, how we use uh, cloud native um, uh, technology to solve the real problem instead of just a demo application. So uh, this is, uh, we will call that a, a generic sample application, uh, which is which will be maintained by the community. So Alois is leading this work. So the idea is uh, we try to show, uh, we try to show me the code instead of white paper. So the original goal in the SIG is that we want to write a lot of white papers to explain how, how the things work, but uh, eventually found that it's more easier for us to, to do this showcase by having a sample application. And then we, we create uh, demos and samples around this application to show, uh, okay, what is really happening in the cloud native application delivery system ecosystem. So this is the direction we want to go uh, in the next step. Uh, we want to create a sample app. We want to create a uh, the the demos and the use and the showcases around the application instead of just the writing white papers. And um, uh, in order to do that, we will we are also trying to publish a blog post series about application delivery, a technology deep dive. So uh, one question is who who should we contact in CNCF if we want to publish some blog post uh, in the name of uh, SIG app deliver delivery. Uh, uh, I record there. I can answer that. Um, sorry, hi, this is Priyanka. Yeah, um, yeah you thank you. Just send an email to pr at cncf.io. I'm okay. on that alias and we'll get you sorted. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, that is what, what I'm asking. Thank you very much. <laughs> of course. Okay, so the last working item I, I, I want to give a quick update is that uh, it's quite similar to the blog post. It's uh, actually about a station. The station, is, you can think of it's more like a summary about this blog post. Um, so we will give a, this is a community will give it a session in the KubeCon North America. It's about a it's a deep dive deep dive talk about cloud native application management ecosystem. So if anyone think uh, you have some project or idea which is interesting and want to be highlighted in the talk, want to be engaged more with the community session, uh, we are very happy to talk and we are very happy to uh, involve anything which can be shared in, in this session. Okay. This is uh, what we can update uh, regarding to seek app delivery. Yeah, Amy. Great, you've got a lot in here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Any you. other questions from chat? Anything Any else? That... I, I have a quick question about the about the sample app. I think it's a it's a great idea. Um, and the question is, uh, it says it's a community maintained sample. So is the plan for app delivery to start the effort and then for community to get involved um, later? Uh, I think we want to have the community get involved at the uh, very beginning. So, uh, so, so yeah, that the idea is that we want to get everybody uh, to contribute ideas uh, around the sample application. But the sample application itself uh, may be proposed by the uh, tech lead or coaches at the very beginning. Uh, but the application, uh, but I, I will, I will, I will assume that this will be just a bootstrap then it will be fully maintained by the whole community. So yeah, that is the current idea. Got it, thank you, it's a great idea. Yeah. Okay, then we can move on. I believe our next one is SIG Contributor Strategy. So Josh. Hey there, sound check? Seems good. Okay. Um, so uh, just a few things, um, but uh, including a couple of things we'd like feedback from the TOC on. Um, uh, the first thing which we don't need feedback from the TOC on is um, we've, we're going to be doing a project paperwork help session at KubeCon. Um, we still need to figure out the logistics of this, but it's been accepted, um, which is 
we've been generating a lot of checklists of what projects need in order to have a complete picture, uh, particularly if you're aiming for graduation um, or to get from sandbox to incubating or just to get accepted to CNCF. Um, and our plan is to help projects with that at virtual KubeCon. Um, the, um, so we'll be doing that. Um, for our various sub-projects, um, the governance working group spent some time discussing last week's special TOC meeting. Um, wanted to remind the TOC that um, per our email, we're still waiting for the TOC to confirm that uh, they want to go into this new direction for requirements um, before we start putting a lot of effort into trying to write up and define those. Um, we haven't seen that confirmation. Um, the, um, we are also, we've also been continuing our work of writing guidance for projects. Um, this is true both uh, for governance and also for community growth, um, contributor growth. Um, uh, and now that we've actually generating a lot of guidance documentation for projects, the questions have risen, where is that going? Where is the approved guidance going to be published? Um, there isn't currently really a place um, within the CNCF ecosystem to publish that kind of thing. Um, so, uh, you know, um, again, we want to come to the, uh, the TOC. Would it be okay to stand up a a uh, site called something like contributors.cncf.io where we would publish material that, that had, had been approved um, as guidance for CNCF projects. Um, um, because we need a place that's not just a GitHub repository and stuff in GitHub repositories is both not searchable and also it's never clear which material is approved and which isn't. Um, finally, uh, governance just uh, put in there's an issue of proposal that uh, to explore um, because we have to determine that the projects actually want to do this. Um, the idea of having a joint um, code of conduct enforcement committee for smaller projects, projects that are not big enough to have their own COC committees. Um, uh, so that's linked off of the slides. Um, I will post that into the chat, um, a link from that. Um, and discuss that on the issue. Um, for the maintainer circle, uh, there's gonna be a discussion of resiliency on October 22nd CNCF meeting, um, at least tentatively scheduled for that. Um, contributor growth, um, again, publishing documents. Uh, first one is on measuring project health. Um, I, the, um, they're uh, prioritizing finishing the documentation on uh, creating a contributor ladder, um, also templates for that. Um, uh, so if that does become a requirement for graduated projects, um, projects will have all the information they need to create a contributor ladder. Um, uh, and uh, also community and contributor sort of management guidelines. Uh, finally, the discovery survey is still open. Lots going on in here. Um, looking for feedback on, um, sounds like things that you need the most are, are kind of like, where should we be putting things? Yeah, yeah, that's the number one thing. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, and, um, and, you know, and this would include guidance on governance, guidance on contributor growth, any maintainer circle activities. That is, where, what is our location for people who are working on the projects for information for them? Um, the, um, and because right now we have like we have contribute.cncf.io and that's information for potential new contributors that sort of routes them to projects. But that's actually a different audience than the audience of people who already run existing projects. Um, the um, and the maintainer.cncf.io domain was taken for a different purpose and moving it would be very difficult. So um, contributors.cncf.io is the best name we could come up with. We're not particularly attached to it. Uh, mostly what we want from the COC is to determine that, uh, TOC is to determine that 
um, it's okay to stand up a new site, subsite within the CNCF domain, um, rather than necessarily getting involved in naming bike shedding. Although if somebody has a particularly clever idea for a name, um, I would love to hear it because I don't. Amy, who maintains this website with? We do. Um, and that can be as simple as being able to have just like a GitHub pages thing that's attached to, um, a, you know, whatever subdomain you'd like. So um, from the technical side, it's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. Having a dedicated location for contributors uh, is, is a good idea. And um, Josh, you mentioned the, um, the maintainers cncf.io. There is, there is already a page for that. Yeah, that's yeah, actually that's the gigantic spreadsheet of like everyone who's yeah. a maintainer. So like taking that one over is gonna be hard. Got it. I just, I, I just clicked on it. It's just a, it's just a dog. It, it's gigantic. It's a lot of fun. Um, I, think, I think we passed 500 maintainers um, about a month or so ago. So yeah. yeah. I mean, like, yeah, something more structured like a website is probably better. Contribute is just redirecting to GitHub at the moment, though. Yes, that one could actually so, be taken over as well. Yeah, I mean, it might. It seems confusing to me to have contribute and contributors separately. I'd kind of, it would seem to make sense to have one website that with content both for people on who, who want to be onboarded and for people who are already there, maybe just to. Okay. Those we we discussed that um, in one of the meetings. Those are actually pretty different audiences. I mean, because if you think about why somebody goes to the location, right? Why somebody goes to contribute right now is there? Hey, um, I just graduated from programming camp, or I just got involved in cloud native, but Kubernetes is too big for me to get involved in. Um, you know, what other projects can I get involved in? And that's one orientation. And there's a completely different orientation, which is to say, you know, hey, um, I'm, you know, Frederick, I run Prometheus. Um, how do I get help with project PR? So these are very different needs. And so if we put them both under contribute.cncf.io, the homepage for contribute.cncf.io would have to be a big page with two buttons on it, one of which says, I'm looking to contribute to a project, and the other one says, I already run a project. And while we could do that, um, it's not like subdomains cost us money. I'm seeing like the uh, new site sounds good. Probably like need more conversation. I guess I'm take this to email. Josh, is your ask on an approval for an actual domain or a process to get one in short order so we don't keep bike shedding? Yeah. The um, um, basically, you know, yeah, an approval to get you know, to, to stand up a new site under CNC, subsite under cncf.io, name to be determined later, um, bike shedding to happen on mailing list or somewhere else. So does that silence means the TOC is fine with standing up a domain? I think uh, having a dedicated dedicated website uh, makes a lot of sense for contributors and and maintainers. And yeah, I, I agree. I think it would be uh, useful to have a website. Um, that said, I don't think everybody from the TOC is here, so maybe let's follow up uh, over email. Yeah, we are missing a few folks, so email follow-up would be excellent. Thank you. All right, any other questions, any other notes around contributor strategy? Nope. 
All right. See lots of plus ones. Lee, instead of bike shedding, you get to present. <laughs> I'm so much better at bike shedding than this. <clears throat> okay, um, you can try both. <laughs> well, um, well, good. So SIG Network, uh, we, we did not meet this last time, but we, we uh, have been consistent prior to that. Um, last time or two, if memory serves, uh, we use the SIG Network um, core meeting time to advance the service mesh working group. Um, I think uh, we've covered once or twice in this meeting uh, part of the, some of the initiatives under the service mesh working group. One of them that we had only alluded to and hadn't discussed um, much, you know, it sort of relates to, um, well, now I forget the exact name of the first SIG that spoke, the application delivery. SIG uh, was talking about, um, well, sample apps and uh, publishing of those and helping educate and that's certainly part of the same charter for SIG network. Um, within the service mesh working group, there's been an effort to bring together a number of uh, common service mesh patterns. So the, the link in the slide links to um, a sheet that has right around 60 patterns. Um, the, there's about 30 that are considered foundational and about 30 that are considered advanced. And so that working group has been advancing those patterns. Um, it's the intention of those that are involved to, um, well, uh, provide those as, um, provide those as sample, well, how do I, uh, um, provide easy tooling to deploy those sample patterns. So the sample patterns that are being worked on in the service mesh working group, um, some of those members are also um, authoring a book on service mesh patterns. So they'll be, they'll be included in that, that separate book, but also um, the community around um, Meshery is um, working on implementing those patterns to make them easy to deploy so that people can uh, learn about them, to play around with them. Um, Part of the effort of the working group around patterns is to also identify anti-patterns. Um, and so that's kind of an update from the service mesh working group. Uh, recently, um, uh, Submariner as a potential project proposal it's, um, uh, shows signs of, of interest in potentially um, submitting, which is great. So we want to spend some time with those folks and welcome them to come present or to go uh, apply. Um, Ambassador is uh, an incubation or proposed incubation level project um, currently under review. Yeah, those are, uh, and then, yep, we, we will, I think it, the last two to three times that we've had, we've had uh, KubeCon deep dives uh, slash intros and so we're, I think we're on the board again for this upcoming KubeCon. So yeah, that's... Uh... Yeah, where are we on ambassadors? I jump back in. Is that, is that not the question you were hoping for today? <laughs> I, I'm under equipped to, I'm, yeah, I couldn't, I can't speak to it directly. I can follow up with you offline. That's fine. Any other questions in here? Checking chat, checking like anybody unmuting. All right. Thank you, Lee. Go ahead and move on. Observability. I think that's either Matt or Richie or go ahead. Yeah. Hello. How are you? Um, uh, so we have a quick update for today. We're not undergoing, we're not in the process of, of any, uh, ongoing reviews, you know, for uh, having projects move from one uh, portion of the CNCF to another sandbox uh, incubated graduated. Um, following the state of observability um, work that was done by Cheryl, that was pretty awesome to see. Um, there was a desire to have the SIG undertake um, a more comprehensive, broader look at not just end user community members, but the state of observability tooling uh, and people's experiences with it uh, more broadly. Uh, so given the, <laughs> given the, um, 
the nuances there and doing that properly uh, within you know, the umbrella of a CNCF SIG, uh, we've decided to uh, start formulating a proposal for an actual working group that would have, you know, all of the, um, all of the process and oversight that a working group would have at the TOC level. So that's work in progress. Uh, there's a draft, but it's quite early. But just as a preview, the SIG is, is taking, that, uh, taking that up. Uh, there's another series of work items that are ongoing. Uh, one is uh, pretty exciting, um, and it's a Prometheus uh, slash Thanos metrics uh, analytics API. Uh, this came out of some work that Bartok has been doing uh, with those upstream communities uh, and is really around an API that's that's still quite, uh, it, it's, it, it's nascent, uh, but it's all around how analytics workloads uh, can uh, engage with you know and and move around access uh, manipulate uh, uh, data generated from observability tooling uh, so there's a link in the slide uh, and there was a recent spike for that to to add parquet as an input output format um, we are organizing a round of observability projects uh, where they can come to the sig and do either short webinars or introductions to the project um, as an example, we've reached out and have ongoing discussions with Litmus, which is a chaos engineering uh, project that has a lot of observability outputs. Uh, and um, another example is open telemetry. Uh, we're, you know, we'll be having a, a webinar with them, but uh, the actual work item that is happening presently is defining what's the format for that, you know, a template for slides, things like that, so that uh, it's well formed and it's within the uh, the scope of the SIG and not <laughs> either you know architecture or things like that. Uh, and then lastly, uh, there's a work stream uh, document that we've been incubating in the in the uh, in the SIG around analytics use cases for observability data more broadly. Um, and there's a link there for anyone that's interested. Uh, but other than that, I think uh, things are going well. Uh, we have more people joining every week and the community has been growing and i think you'll see the sig transition from open discussion meet greet let's figure out what this is about to to more horizontally scaling work streams uh, and being able to really um you know provide <laughs> pr provide people who are passionate about the uh, about the whole domain uh, to work in parallel and and collaborate across projects and across industry so that's been very exciting to see I'll say. And that's it from us. Hey, Matt, question. Has the the end user radar, was that a point of discussion within the SIG? Uh, yeah. Yes, that actually consumed, I think, two meetings ago, almost the entire meeting in a, in a positive way, um, uh, as well as last meeting, a, a portion of it. Uh, and out of that discussion, um, you know, I think we want to vector people's passions, I'll say, uh, to to the working group so that we can we can actually have, um, you know, a, a time bounded effort, uh, goals, artifacts, outputs that are that are agreed upon before it starts, given, again, uh, the nuance around um, the CNCF, its role in the space. And frankly, most of our uh, most of the folks that have been showing up to the SIG meetings are actually from companies working in the space. Uh, we actually would like to see more and more end users show up. Um, I'm an end user, um, but I'm in, uh, I'm quite outnumbered. Uh, and that's not a bad thing either, right? To, to see, you know, it, it's actually, yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll just leave it there. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. Is there more of a specific question that you're asking or, uh, I mean, yeah, yes, it did spawn, spawn quite a lot of conversation. Um, and Cheryl joined us uh, uh, two, two meetings ago, so a month ago, uh, to kind of help to disambiguate and, and provide more context around um, what it was, what it was not, what the goals were, what the goals were not, et cetera. I appreciate that. Nope, there wasn't a, it was an innocent question or there wasn't an insinuation. Of, oh uh, yeah. Well, so if I'm, if I'm speaking freely, well, carefully, freely, I think, um, I think some of the, and again, the, the recordings are up. I don't want to, I don't want to put, I don't want to poorly summarize, but um, I think there was a little bit of, um, 
learning that, that folks new to the CNCF and to the SIG um, structure. Um, uh, I don't want to say learning, that's pejorative. Uh, not pejorative. I think we had to kind of reiterate, you know, that this was a survey of a small set of end user community members. It was not a broad industry survey. We, you know, we covered things like, you know, the CNCF is not a kingmaker. This SIG is not, a, you know, a, either a, a kingmaker nor is it, a, you know, an approval body. It's a place where we can come together and talk about these these issues and and ideally form working groups and or work stream form work streams that that are that are productive in a collaborative way. Um, uh, and so, you know, when it comes to a broader survey, I think. That is well within the, our scope. We called it out in our charter as, as something we'd like to do. And, and it serves a number of purposes, one of which being to identify gaps in the CNCF where we might want to engage with projects that are not in the CNCF, but also to look at how people um, out in industry that are using, in some cases, a blend of open source and or CNCF projects or vendor projects. And sometimes those vendor projects are based on those open source projects. So it's, it's quite a layered, nuanced um, domain. And so if we wanted to undergo a broader survey that doesn't just include CNCF members, but includes, you know, um, industry generally, how would we go about that? And so thankfully some people in the SIG have prior experience with running surveys like that. Um, and, you know, again, it's, it's, it's a very early proposal in its earliest days of, of the first draft. So we don't really have anything to talk about concretely, but um, we hope in the coming cycles, uh, to have a concrete proposal for the TOC for a working group that so we can you know be be clear and specific about what it is and then and then take on the work to do it. Okay. I have two more questions that I will yeah, yeah, put in the chat. <laughs> uh, so th thank yeah, you. Yeah. This is excellent. All right. Um, runtime, you're up. Hey everyone. This is Ricardo. So yeah, so we uh, have been doing some uh, work uh, reaching out to um, communities and having some presentations in our meetings. Um, so in different spaces. Uh, so on the OS for container space, uh, uh, we had uh, two projects, two projects presenting our meetings. Uh, the first one was Talos and that's a um, an operating system that allows you to manage all the components using APIs. So it's a secure way of managing uh, all the components. Uh, and, and it's a pattern that is, uh, you know, being used more in, there, for example, there's, a, there's another project called uh, Bottle Rocket from Amazon Web Services. And they're using a similar approach where you manage the operating system using just APIs, and so you don't have access to the shell or you know or SSH access. So it's a different way of uh, having it more secure. Then another project in the operating systems for containers is Flatcar. That's from Kimbalk, and that. That's pretty much an evolution on CoreOS and with some extra capabilities. So they're at they're getting a lot more more adoption because I think CoreOS is not longer being um, or, or it's not longer active. So yeah, and 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 the same idea behind CoreOS where you have this lightweight operating system where you can run containers on top of it. And then on the containers in run times, uh, we had some projects present and we also reached out to some other projects. So uh, one of the interesting ones that we had at our last meeting uh, is uh, WSCC, which is a WebAssembly Secure Capabilities Connector. Uh, so that's a way to uh, decouple your applications um, uh, into different pieces, uh, into different WebAssembly modules, and uh, these dif different pieces can talk to each other using a broker. Uh, so the idea is, is for uh, making it easier for developers to just focus on on the business logic and use some of the other bits uh, in WebAssembly, so they they you know they 
has those other capabilities uh, in those other bits. For example, like if you want to connect to a database using uh, or, or Redis database or like um, Cassandra database, there will be a WebAssembly module just for that. And so developers wouldn't have to focus on, on creating that WebAssembly module, but they, they would just use it and use the system uh, to connect to it. So that was WA. WASCC, so pretty interesting, and it seems like that's uh, some of the um, workloads and, and how they're going to be maybe run in the future, or, or, or a glimpse of how they they will run in the future. So another project is uh, Trow, and we reached out to them. That was that's a container image registry, and it's written Rust, uh, so they're interested in presenting, so they haven't confirmed yet, so hopefully we get them to present in our meetings. Then we reached out to Wasm3, which is a WebAssembly runtime, and this is a runtime that you can use to run something like uh, uh, your WebAssembly modules uh, that can be used with uh, something like WASCC. And then we also reached out to another project uh, called Nanos, and that's uh, basically running a unikernel in a VM. So we'll see if they want to present in our meeting. On the AI ops and HIOT space, also we had some projects uh, uh, presented and we reached out to. Uh, so Seldom Core is basically uh, machine learning operating oper operations uh, framework. So it allows you to serve your models, machine learning models, and then also make the inference and, and have some other capabilities uh, on how to improve uh, some of the, the, the model and, and get information on the, uh, how it's working and how it's, it's doing the inference part. Then Qflow is another project that we reached out and they're interested in presenting. So uh, basically this is machine learning end to end. Uh, so it allows you to run the full stack, like uh, the learning part, the serving part. Uh, so you can use something like Salon Core on top of Qflow. Uh, so uh, we'll hopefully have them present. Flockflow is another project that it's in the edge computing IoT uh, space uh, and they're scheduled to present at our next meeting. And last but not least, very net. It's a um, deep learning uh, gateway that runs on, on, on top of a Raspberry Pi. So you can uh, set it up at the edge and you know do uh, deep learning type of workloads. So that's it for, for the projects and for, for the presentations and communities, I'm sorry. And, and f as far as the projects, uh, so we don't have a lot of activity. activity. So Quay is still looking for a TOC sponsor. So um, we're going to leave it up here um, so that you know it's out there. So in case uh, there's a TOC sponsor that wants to go ahead and continue with the due diligence. And then as far as our con uh, work group, Container Orchestrator the Device Working Group, uh, they submitted a KubeCon North America panel. So they're very excited about that and will be, it got accepted, so we'll be presenting. They're working on a POC. So this is the, the standard way of uh, using devices in containers, so they, they're looking at uh, doing a POC for, with Podman uh, and Container D, which is which are uh, two runtimes. And then they're also looking at integrating with uh, NRI, which is the no resource interface, another uh, project uh, presented presented our at our one of one of our meetings uh, about a month ago. Yeah, and that's all the I have for the updates for SIG runtime. So um, any questions or anything? So, thank you. Lots of good stuff in chat. People are very happy with this. So great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, I don't see any questions to hear. I don't see anybody unmuting. Cool, so we'll move on to security.
Hello. Hello. So, um, quick update on six security. Um, so, first up, we have um, Cloud Native Security Day. Uh, that's happening. Um, we are excited about it. I believe the CFPs um, just ended yesterday. Um, so, we're going to have kind of round up with um, uh, the reviews for the proposals. Uh, there's also kind of chatter. We are, we are thinking about doing a CTF for this uh, virtual instance for this. We'll see how that works out. <laughs> um, but uh, again, all these details about this is in six security events on, on the SEC. Um, so another thing that happened is um, Dan Shaw finished his term as a co-chair for SIG security. So we have nominated Emily Fox as our new co-chair and um, the vote has been successful. So um, congratulations to, to Emily. Um, and another Another thing is on security assessments. Um, so this is um, something that we started off in DockerCon 2019. Uh, we got together and created the first draft for um, what security assessments would look like, the security assessment process. And we made the decision to say that um, after the first five assessments, we will come back and take a review of this process and kind of fine tune it and change it in a way that made sense. Uh, but we didn't want to make any changes yet until we had um, a, a good amount of uh, data points. So right now we are on the completion of uh, our fifth security assessment, which is key cloak. Um, so the assessment has been done. Uh, the, uh, the outline has been drafted, so it's just a matter of cleaning things up and, and um, presenting it. Um, so in light of that, uh, we did a retrospective uh, presentation. We put together kind of some feedbacks from the initial um, drafters of the assessment process. Uh, and there were a lot of um, ideas and a lot of um, discussion points that were brought up in the community. So we've set up a um, kind of a small working group to kind of target what are some things you can do with the security assessment process. Uh, this involves, um, you know, making the documentation a little bit better, um, figuring out how to modify the schedule so it works better for both reviewers as well as project leads. And uh, one of the uh, target items that we also like to see is to um, see how this will map onto the new uh, TOC process um, from the new sandbox process as well as incubation and graduation and how it relates to security assessment. Uh, last but not least, um, we have the Cloud Native Security White Paper. Uh, so progress on that is good. Uh, we had a few gaps in terms of content for the storage, um, but uh, we reached out to Six Storage and Alex has volunteered to help us out with that. Uh, we, are, we are expecting all content to be done within another week or two. And we will be having a draft that will be ready to, um, for review by select reviewers. So hopefully that will be uh, in a ready state that we can share pretty soon. There's and a that's question in chat around um, six security working on the recommendation for in toto at the moment. Um, I think that I think the last one we did was, uh, if I recall correctly, we did something for OPA. I don't think we've made a recommendation for in total yet, um, but this would be similar to, uh, I think, what we did with OPA, which we would, um, is this for incubation, if I'm not wrong? I believe so, yes. Okay, yeah, I, I think we've got to go back um, to the, um, we, we already done a security assessment for InToto. I think um, 
we will go back to that, just see what are the, the changes um, that have been since then, and if uh, we would give a recommendation based on that. But um, let, let me make sure that we have that on our, our list of to-dos. Thank you. All right, we can move on to storage. Go ahead, Alex. Hello. Um, okay, so with um, Profiga, who are currently um, looking to uh, uh, come in as an incubation project, um, Justin Cormack has um, volunteered to be the, um, the TAC sponsor for the due diligence process. Um, we're going to allocate a tech lead and, and I'll be working um, to, to, to schedule those, those first meetings with the, um, with the project team in the coming days or, or, or couple of weeks. Um, with OpenEBS, we had um, a good review with the project team um, around the, the, the multitude of, of, of repos um, and some of the, the, the challenges um, with regards to the licenses. Um, we may, we're going to be um, reviewing this internally, um, but we may need to touch base with, with, the, with the foundation's um, find legal counsel. There's your answer. What is this process? Come find me. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> sure. The, the TIKV um, graduation vote was completed, so that's, uh, so that's great news. Um, the RUC graduation vote is, uh, is still ongoing. Um, during the, the last uh, uh, TOC uh, sandbox review, there were um, a few questions around the IBM's uh, dataset lifecycle framework. Um, there were some questions around uh, you know, the clarity and the, and the, and the target functionality for, for the framework. Um, so, so the project team took the opportunity to put um, an FAQ together and, and represent it um, at the SIG, which, which, which I've shared with the TOC. Um, but, but fundamentally, you know, we we think there is um, little overlap with the with the um, with the cap that the that the TOC was was concerned about. Um, so, so we think that uh, this should uh, uh, this new information hopefully should should um, allow the TOC to vote. Um, for the for the project at the next uh, sandbox meeting, um, also the performance and benchmarking white paper um, it's it's been paused for a couple of weeks, but we hope to finish this off and um, and, and it should be draft well before KubeCon and 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 launch it formally uh, in time for KubeCon. Um, and we have our virtual session accepted. One of the one of the things we're we're looking to um, to uh, to build out in in the run up to KubeCon is um, some of the uh, a view of some of the gaps that we see in the in the storage um, CNCF landscape at least um, and similar to to what runtime have done which is absolutely exemplary is try and um, try and invite some of the some of the projects uh, within that landscape to to present uh, at the SIG and, and and build up. A bit more of a, of a community to to address some of those gaps. So, watch the space. We'll have more information for the next meeting. Uh, and that's me. All right. Um, I don't see any other questions in chat. Anything else? All right. Overall questions. Going once. Going twice. I guess everyone is done here. So thank you very much, everyone. Good to see all of you and uh, be well. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye, all.